but I, I think, you know, if you, if you were here at opening, we talked a little bit about how we think about uh, vendors and sponsors and try to, um, it, you know, embrace them as part of the industry and the work that we all do, um, even though we're not a vendor con. Uh, in the same way, I think that what we're trying to do now uh, with, with this se uh, uh, little setup and what I'm hoping to do in the future um, is recognize, like, as an industry, as a group of people, we've pushed back against terms like rock star. Uh, we've pushed back hard against cults of personality um, and people being kind of a, you know, a, a, a big thing that we put on the pedestal. But the same token, I think we kind of lost track a little bit of the people that are actually involved uh, in the community, involved doing the work. Um, and it's important to understand that we are all individuals. We've all had our own journeys to get here. And what I'm hoping to do is actually have a little bit of a one-on-one a -on -one with people who um, you know, have shaped or are shaping uh, the work that we're doing now to learn about them so you can learn from their experiences, their journeys, their opinions, how they respond to awkward questions, things of that nature. So um, the moose now have names, and I've already forgotten them. Uh, star. star, gate. OK, yeah, so the, the one, yeah. <laughs> I did forget, actually. So, so stars over there. Um, the way this is going to work, we're going to bring out our first, uh, I want to say, contestant. And um, we're going to jam for about 15 minutes. And then we'll bring out the next and next. And we'll just kind of roll with it. Uh, we're open to questions and heckling from the audience, because there's like eight of us left. Um, this is a relatively light end of con event, I think. We thought, everybody thought it was going to snow. It's like sunny and windy out, you know? So whatever, uh, wimps. But you all persevered, so we appreciate it. And the internet's here. Hi, internet. So without further ado, uh, Whitney Merrill, why don't you come out and join me? Let's give everybody, Whitney, a round of applause. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Very excited to have Whitney. So most of my experience with Whitney has been uh, uh, with Heidi participating as they judge the uh, facial hair assessment contest at DEF CON, yes. otherwise known as the beard contest. I do love beards. So most of the time I see you, you have your nose stuck in a man's chin, um, <laughs> which is a fairly <laughs> awkward thing to do for a professional, because she's actually very intelligent and has done a lot of great things, but my experience is mostly <laughs> Smells like pine, and uh, it's very, it's very awkward. So uh, thank you for joining us. That's no good. problem. As a non-beard haver myself, I really have learned a lot. About we could change that, like right now. <laughs> like we could totally. Can someone try to get Whitney a beard in the next 15 minutes, please? Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bobby's on it. We will have you a beard. <laughs> and then, and then I will judge your beard in kind. Oh, that'll be great. Perfect. Yes, a, a turning of the tables has occurred today. So, uh, what do you do, Whitney? Uh, I am a privacy, e-commerce, and consumer protection counsel at a small video game company called EA. Um, I do, uh, it, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, awesome place, I love it. I'm not leaving anytime soon. If you want to pick my brain about why that is, I'll tell you off stage. But um, I do incident response. I support our security team. I also do privacy engineering for our identity team. Um, and then in my free time, free time, uh, I run the Crypto and Privacy Village that appears at DEF CON um, and will be at B-Sides uh, SF this year. Cool. Woo-hoo! Woo Yay! Uh, <laughs> what's, um, so, I mean, why would you get into privacy? Like, why is this your jam? Oh. Um, so, some people have heard this story before. Um, I was horribly cyberbullied growing up, um, pretty, pretty significantly. And as I started to dig into how to protect myself or find the people who did it or uh, talk to the police about recourse, I got digger, or bigger and bigger into um, just the various privacy and, and security and computer issues. But I knew very early on I wanted to do something with tech and policy. For a while I wanted to be an astronaut, although who still doesn't want to be one? Um, a public or private sector astronaut? A, pu a public sector and okay. then you know, things didn't go so well in that direction, and so. Yeah, I don't think there's a, much of a future left in public sector astronauts in the U.S. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bleak. It is. It is unfortunately bleak. So it's a good thing you found your second career. Yeah, so I found my second career, uh, and I was a public policy major in college and knew I wanted, I wrote a thesis on free speech on the Internet, uh, specifically about. Where'd you go to college? A small liberal arts school called Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. Beautiful Hartford. Yeah, they have a... No offense to them, they have no computer science program, really. I mean, they have a small one, but it's not big. So what, I didn't what's north and, and what's north of Hartford? Um, Nothing. 
That's what's north of Hartford. I, just, well, I, I didn't know if you were aware of that. But if you're driven through Hartford, it turns into Massachusetts, and then it just falls off. That's the, actually the flat earthers say that's about the end of the world. People from Boston are going to be upset by that, but it's kind of true. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's the first time I've had someone throw a schmoo ball. That was good. Well, and it wasn't even a ball. It's a mountain. So, a mountain. You know, yeah. We're, we're squ- what, you can, you can, you can, if you, if you dare. No, no. Okay. I'm <laughs> There may or may not be something happening if you touch that. Um, so, and then you did your grad work somewhere else. Uh, yeah, so I uh, went to law school uh, and about halfway in, uh, or, well, I went to law school and interned with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And, and uh, they said to me, if you can pay your way to Vegas, uh, you can come to DEF CON. And I was like, oh, that, that kind of sounds cool. Um, and so I went to DEF CON my first time in DEF CON 20 and basically fell in love with the community and decided that's what I was gonna do for the rest of my life um, and support the community in any way I can. And so uh, I kept going, even though I wasn't an intern anymore, to DEF CON to work for EFF, and then eventually started the Crypto and Privacy Village. Um, But while I was in law school, I also decided I really wish I had done computer science. So I took a full course of I was, I enrolled full time as an undergraduate computer science student my last semester of law school, did the prereqs, applied for my master's at UIUC, and then stayed for a master's in computer science. So Hartford or Champaign-Urbana? Champaign-Urbana. Really? Why? Uh, Well, so I went to law school there because they had a great engineering program, top five in the country. I mean, like the town. Like, we're talking like the pizza and the beer. Oh, I mean, I'm from Chicago, so it was kind of nice to be near my family. But Champagne's really a shithole. Yeah, that's why. That's, I'm like, when I'm thinking of like shithole comparisons, Hartford versus Champagne, it's like, that's a tough one. That's a toss-up, baby. I mean, the scales yeah. are balanced. I mean, Hartford's not uh, not great either. No, that's what it's I'm saying. Like, it's it's no, it's not great. Sorry, like Hartford. It. Like, like when you wanted to do something in Hartford, you'd go to West Hartford, the suburbs. West Hartford. That sounds glamorous. <laughs> Is that where all the hockey rinks are? No, just better restaurants. Just better restaurants. Excellent. So, what? West Anchorage. West Anchorage is actually <laughs> the Cook Inlet. Um, so, it's kind of wet there um, and cold. Uh, so, um, I'm going to do some word association with you. Okay. And see if we can get something to happen here. Sounds um, good. So, that, and you can respond anyway. Free form, single word, soliloquy. If you want to give me a haiku, can you do haikus on the fly? Oh no. Really? What's, what's the, I don't is even know. Is it 575? Is that it? Yeah. yeah, I don't think I could do that on fly. I can try. Okay. okay. Well, it, it, it's entirely up to you. So the first, moose. Sitting next to me, fat. I love this moose very much. It's funny. Nope. Ah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I couldn't do it. Next, law school. Uh... uh it's wow, not for everyone. Is... It's not for everyone. Can anyone psychoanalyze this? You're taking a long time to answer. I think that might... Well, the first thing that came to my head was is, is dark and probably not great for a lighthearted... That's uh... what I was actually actually gunning for. That was the right answer. So, uh... Yeah, go, go search about a law professor at the University of Illinois uh, that was recently public in the news. And, really? Um, yeah, he sexually harassed a whole bunch of people, so... As, as one does and didn't get caught for a long time. And now they do, yeah, which is Yeah, now nice. they do. It's, it's nice, actually yeah. quite pleasant when they get caught. Yep. Um, video games. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Really? Like, working at a video game company hasn't spoiled you. You're like, fuck these guys. I don't want to do video games anymore. No, I, I actually really, really, really like working uh, at a video game company primarily because your user base is really passionate. And... Um, that, that was polite. <laughs> um, I, I, my, the team I'm on at work She's is, a lawyer. <laughs> the team I'm on, on, on at work is um, called the Privacy and Player Protection Team, and we literally, our, our mission... All right, do it. Put it on her. Let's see how this works out. This is a Santa beard. All right, I'm going to judge you now. I'm going to... Can I, can I, may I have permission to smell your beard? All right. Smells very sterile. It's construction. How long did it take you to grow that beard? Um, about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That is effective human growth hormone that you have there. Yeah. What's, um, uh, what do you use as care and feeding for your beard? Um, 
usually... Um, hand sanitizer? <laughs> hand like, sanitizer. Well, I mean... Chicken um, wing goo? Whatever they do, you know, put on it in China to make it, like, <laughs> straight. Straight, and they'll listen to you, actually, as well. So. Yeah. Um, and the loop around your head really completes the... Uh, Completes the, the look. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So uh, what what's the scale you normally use? Uh, the scale for DEF CON? Oh, for judging beards? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of people who have homemade. Uh, no, I mean like linear. Is it zero to five? Is it like oh, yeah. good, zero better, to best? Five, and then you know what are the bribes like? And yeah. Well, you didn't bribe me, so I'm going to go with like that's a solid three. Oh, okay. So that's a good job. So that's, three. I'll, three I'll for take the beard. that for a first time. Yeah, right, right in the middle. So. <laughs> So, so mustache. Mustache. That's the that's we're continuing word association. Oh, uh, brown. Brown. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, let's try another one. Moose. We did this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> crypto. Means cryptography. Yay! <laughs> I have one more. Uh, moose. Schmoo. There we go. All right. <laughs> Three out of five ain't bad. Um, so, uh, in in all reality, I know that crypto means cryptography. Yeah. But for cryptocurrency, we'll <laughs> use the complete proper noun. Um, do you feel like it has a place in preserving people's digital privacy in the future? <sighs> I'm not really sure. Um, I think it will really depend on how it's regulated in the future. Um, because like any technology, if it's not implemented correctly, it can be abused. So um, I'm not sure it will be what a lot of the financiers expect it to be, but I think it will have some sort of underground place. When you say financiers, do you mean like crypto spec people or actually people who do finance for a living? People who think ICOs are a good idea. Ah, uh, yes, those financiers. Excellent. <laughs> Poking people in the eye. They're very I'm being quiet. Nice There's a lot of crypto people in the audience. Sorry. Like, stop talking about that. <laughs> I lost it all. <laughs> uh, what was it like to transition from like a, a public sector to a private sector? I can't believe I have a corporate credit card. Um, you can spend money and like, it's like a thing, right? <laughs> like, wow, you're, you're I get paid back for it. It's a magic. Yeah, you're allowed to, you know, have lunch. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it was really interesting. Lawyers bill all their lunches, by the way. Like, I, It was really interesting more so that I hadn't worked in a corporate environment ever really. So going from you know, doing good at the federal, so I used to work at the Federal Trade Commission, and I did investigations into companies for privacy and data security investigations. I also worked on the AT&T litigation for throttling and a case against DeVry University for scamming people in, for for-profit colleges. Um, so I got to do a lot of really good, feel-good work. <laughs> yes, yes, it was awesome. So, um, uh, going in-house was really fun, too, and one of the reasons I picked the team I'm on is because um, they really, our team really, that, our mission is to fight for the users, and so it makes my job really easy every day because... You, you live in Tron? Yeah. <laughs> like, really? Like that's, that's yeah, I, you I ride the motorcycle cycle, to work? I light cycle oh to all God. my meetings. That They're like, glorious. who is this lady? And I'm like, I'm here to save you. Yeah, that's no, awesome. <laughs> what are the what, what's the thing the the little chip picker thing? What's it called? The inspector or the um, recognizer? So does EA have recognizers that like roll around the hallways trying to like grab people and stuff? N not that I know. Not of. that you know of. No, that's a different division. Yeah, probably. probably Maybe up in Vancouver. Uh, it's actually Ubisoft. Um, <laughs> or Activision. Or Activision Blizzard. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I'm going to ask you to casually take a seat to the other side of Star, Happy to. Um, and then figure out which mic you want to keep. Because oh. it, yep. Oh, she she took the new mic. Excellent. That was a good choice. This way, the battery, yeah. you know, yeah, situation excellent. So is now, my favorite. Oh, you knocked over the pine-scented thing on the not the other side. Oh, the I'll other fix side. it. Yep. Uh, while oh. she fixes it, we're awkwardly lost. Why don't you come out? This here's Lost. He's going to join us now. She is not a mechanical engineer. She's a lawyer. So, did you get it? We good? Is yeah. It? Hello. Okay. All right. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is Lost. Hello. Okay, we're done. Crickets. <laughs> he's wearing he's wearing a good shirt. He's my straight man on this. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself in uh, I don't know ninety seconds or less? Um, Lost. Brian Clark. DefCon. 
puzzle guy, crypto guy, math guy, geek. Did a few things for DEF CON that you may have seen people talk about, but now that's in the past and now moving forward in the future. So I've known you for a while, a stretch. Many years. Um, many years. And um, my takeaway is you do a lot of things. Uh, like you just rattled off this list of things that are all long and complicated to do and whatever. And they all strike me as you don't sleep much, do you? Um, three to four hours a night, if that. Really? Yeah. Like legitimately, like Honestly. three to four hours? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you recommend that as a lifestyle choice? A wholeheartedly no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you actually, I mean, is that actually like a thing? Like are you just not able to sleep or? Um, brain just doesn't shut off. Right. And, and I've got folks on the other coast that I'm constantly in communication with. You could with, move to Colorado. So. Um, I did that for and, a time, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that helps the brain shut off a notch. Um, weed's legal in Colorado, if you didn't know. That was the joke. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd phone that one in or not, but apparently it, I didn't quite. So I guess the question is, like, um, you know, given all that you do, do you have hobbies? Or are they all hobbies? Like, how would you describe, like, lost spare time? What does that book look like? My work... My hobbies, my life, and my passions are all the same thing. Oh, same. Always have been. Right. Because I've found ways to manipulate the system wherever I'm at to force that to be the case. Because it's just me being selfish. Who doesn't want to do what they're interested in? So is that a good thing? From my perspective, I okay. guess. Yeah. So, I mean, I found that as I got older, like, I had less desire to do all the shenanigans. And I needed hobbies that were, like, <laughs> different. Um, so, and you just seem to, like, keep... Pushing a large rock uphill, man. Well, like, well, I was talking with, with Rob Joyce just before coming on here, and he goes, what is the deal with you and Russian synthesizers from the Cold War era? Because I've been doing that. Oh, yeah, totally. That's exactly what I yeah. was thinking. What the fuck and are I you talking like, about? <laughs> like, and I was like, I saw one on eBay, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to fix that, and I'm going to make it work, and it, it's, I don't read Russian yet. And so uh, I bought this synthesizer from this guy in the Ukraine. I had no idea if it was even going to show up. It shows up, and it's just this monstro monstrosity. And I started repairing it, adapting it, so it can be used over here. For those of you that are into music and stuff, they use five-pin MIDI DIN connectors for everything. And maybe not a good design choice to use that same connector for both power and your audio out. But <laughs> So... Um, you know, swapping out, uh, God got one of these old, and, and by the way, the first one was a keytar, so I think that's an important point. The, like, a, like a keyboard that's got a no thing on it? No kidding keytar. Wow, that's very 80s. Yeah. Because Ukrainian Russian synthesizer is actually like yeah. peak 80s. It was interesting um, to see uh, design choices because, you know, during the Cold War, they didn't have access to a lot of things, but they were trying to imitate things like the Moogs and, and stuff like that. We're all looking at Heidi now. Yeah, yeah, she runs across stage and everyone's like, what's happening? Like, so there's people on stage, but now we're all just watching her. So I guess, you, yeah, so I guess you could call that a hobby. All yeah. right, that's a, that's a hobby. Sure. It sounds like everything else you do. Yeah. It's just, it was a new thing, right? Yeah. So, so were there implants in it? Um, not until I was finished. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, oh, is it like um, uh, Strange Brew? Like, if you play certain things, like, do things happen in your house? The skaters come out and, like, beat people to death? It's funny you say that. Speaking of hobbies, so one Christmas for, for Crypt, uh, so I have a tradition. I watch Strange Brew every Christmas. That's one of my Christmas movies. And I taught myself how to forge action figures, and I got action figures. As one does. <laughs> and, and I guess I did such a good job, Crypt didn't realize that I had made these action figures and sent them to him, and they were like characters from Strange Brew that had been adapted, but I put crazy shit all over the packaging and everything, but I did it so it was packaged and everything, and it looked like you went to the store and bought it, and he's like, then I looked at it, and it was like the barcode said 1057. He's like, then I was like, uh, what the fuck? Yeah, you know, yeah, so. yeah. That, again, a little, maybe over the top. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Wait, do you have any questions for Lost while we're up here? I mean, I don't want to exclude you on the other side of Star there. Oh, it's okay. Uh, let me think about that. Okay, I'm, about I'm not good on the spot today, apparently. You're a lawyer. Oh, you're not like a, the kind that gets up in front of a judge lawyer, though. No. No. What so, are they called? L litigation lawyers? Yes. Yes, okay. I know big words. It was great to have Whitney uh, start with the, the Crypto Village stuff because I was DEF CON's official cryptographer for many years, and... To see where they've gone with it from there has been Aww. great. Did you get paid for that? Um, brought to you by Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag ad. Jeez. <laughs> So, what do you, you want to hear? You want to so hear the work I, stuff? You want to hear no, 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 no. So, like, why I, do I live in Maryland and I'm really good at math? Let's do like do that. that like, dude, let's just get that out. I mean, <laughs> I, it's because you work for the Baltimore Sun. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, I, 
the, one of the, the reasons I'm asking this line of questioning, I was struck years ago, Michael Jordan retired. Um, so I'm going to make an, an analog between you and Michael Jordan. Uh, oh. uh, you know, this is going to get really interesting. Uh, sports, yeah, sports ball. Sports like, ball. let's just go down that road. Um, and so Jordan retires, and then like he starts to gamble and do all this stuff. And people are like, "But you're a role model. You can't do that." And Jordan's like, "I'm Michael Jordan. I'm myself. I'm not a role model." I thought it was a really interesting place to take a stand to be like, "Look, it's cool, but I'm done, and I'm going to do my own thing and whatever." And so, um, you know, a lot of people look up to you. Um, a lot of people, um, you know, see the work that you've done and are like, that's amazing. I want to do those kind of things. And then they hear like the, and I sleep for four hours and there's no distinction between work and play and fun and all that kind of thing. Like, you know, do you view yourself as a role model to others? And if so, like, are you ever concerned in the message that that kind of lifestyle sends? I'm a big believer in the fact that the spotlight is always big enough for everyone. And it's funny you mentioned the whole rock star thing. Like, it's no secret from the pulpit in many conferences, this one included when I spoke at, I was thinking about the first time I spoke at Shmoo many, many years ago. Um, I've, I'm a big proponent of if people are too hoity-toity to talk to the, to the younger generations coming up, that tell them to fuck off, we don't want them here anyway. Like, I don't care how good you are in a subject. And so, do I think of myself that way? No, not really. I honestly am shocked still that people like even say things like you just said. And it's not bullshit, it's, it's truth. Um, during the Mystery Challenge years, for example, I was always sleeping under the table with the, the cloth in the contest area. And it was just... Healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. And you were eating what those days? Uh, <laughs> what, salad? Whatever showed up. Well, can you tell, tell me? Yeah, that's a salad physique? gut. Yes. Yeah, that's a common yeah. salad gut. I don't know if anyone else I'll, has a salad gut. I'll have you this know. is all kale, actually. <laughs> I'm just... I'll have you know that this guts can still climb barbed wire fences on physical pen tests last week three times. Wow, you have a video game that does that? Uh, uh, <laughs> we made it just for him. Uh, yeah, um, no, but we, we, should, we should have one winning. Yeah, we I know. Yeah, yeah. It, report writing on an Xbox controller will be really fun. Like, <laughs> what do you want to do now? Write more of the report. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know, could we classify an Xbox as a SCADA system? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you could classify yeah. an Xbox as a SCADA system. It's probably your like, home control for your lights and shit. People will do anything if it's in VR. It, it, anything in VR. I mean, they have the game where you just do a career. Oh, yeah, like, like, like um, a job simulator where my kids do things productive, but it's not actually happening. Yeah, I'm super, <laughs> I'm super impressed with that trick. So like, it's funny you say that because my, my wife has been playing uh, Slime Rancher with my daughter, who's, who's three years old. And my name for that game is Chores, because it's a game <laughs> where you literally just do chores in the game. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're teaching her? Well, she's like, well, maybe we're teaching her to do chores. I was like, okay, I, I take it back. You, know? you could probably teach them to do chores with real chores. Yeah. But there's just, a just a hunch. I mean, like, now that we practice washing the dishes, let's wash the dishes. <laughs> These dishes weigh something. Um, Jesus, why lost? So I get asked that a lot. So the original. Well, never mind. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> what uh, what are your thoughts on cryptocurrency? Since you're wearing the uh, you're wearing the shirt against it, like the whole the whole Urkel Merkel tree fanatic waste of time. Yeah, yeah. Let's start there. Didn't that answer the question? That that did. I guess yeah. <laughs> you're not a fan. You're not a fan. I do still have a physical Bitcoin, and I think Grifter has one too. The, where they, on them? Where they printed right now? They printed on them. Then on the holiday. get them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I still have one, and I was like, I told Griffin, I was like, should I sell this or give it to somebody? He's like, no, I'll keep it. It's a part of history. And I was like, eh, bad part At of one history. point, it was a $20,000 part of history. Yeah. Now it's like $3,000 part yeah. of history. <laughs> um. So, I, so I, own a, I own a Bitcoin. You do own a Bitcoin. Yeah. Do you take it to work? No. No? You don't sh do you show no. it to your friends at parties? Uh, no, I show other coins at parties. Show like other this, coins. Like this giant coin right here. Is that a coin in your pocket? I thought you just you dipped. No, it's an actual coin. Because I brought a spittoon yeah, for yeah, you. You want, you want to see it? Yeah, yeah let's see yeah, the coin. Yeah. Let's see the. It's, it's a good luck. It's a good luck charm. It's a good luck. Jesus. Yeah. It's gigantic. Yeah. It's ginormous. Is it warm? That it, is. It was in his pocket, he, and he's a, alive. Gummy bear. It's warm and soft. <laughs> it's been in my pocket. What is this thing? That's the first curious codes coin. So, so, yeah. so uh, upon not having the creative outlet of doing Mystery Challenge or the badges for DEF CON and all that, um, we, my goal with all of these things is always to include as many people as possible. So um, I formed a company, actually, two of the other members are in the front row right now, 
um, not for making money, but just as a legal entity to put puzzle challenges, cryptography type stuff out into the world for people to have. You own a company that is designed not to make money? Correct. We don't know anything about yeah. that. <laughs> like, it's like, it's totally foreign. <laughs> that's just stupid. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So that, that was, that, that's a puzzle coin. And uh, there's some people who are still working on solving it. Um, it's been out for since 2016, this particular where do you one. Where do you get a coin like that fashioned? Um, we have a bunch of sources now, and, and these two usually deal with the manufacturer, so I don't have to worry about that. So I, I don't know. Are these know. real people? Or so are they, then what do you do? My, mystery people. You're, you're pointing vaguely out there yeah. as if you have friends and coworkers. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, a, you know, like... And the person over there yeah, helps me yeah, too. When you have, like, yeah, imaginary friends now. Yeah. Like uh, Crypt and Hex that are okay. in the front row right You now. could wave. There. Wait, make sure you wave so no one else in the audience can see you, yeah. and they believe that these are imaginary yeah. people in the front row. Lost imaginary coworkers are in the front row. It's yeah. okay. We can help you with that. So, yeah. Excellent. With that, I'm going to ask you to take a step over and sit sure. on the other side of Star. Um, and you can decide if you want to kick Whitney down. or Nope, nope. And he's got both microphones, so this will make the next one Let's very see exciting. see what he does now. Yeah. Uh, hey, Turbo, why don't you come on out? I see a recognizer in the back there. So uh, uh, there is a recognizer in the back. Can you, I mean, if you want to awkwardly go around and try to pick people up and chase them, you're welcome to it, sir. Like, that one's not on. We're going to switch. Oh, yep, there we go. We're good. Hello. We're good. Yeah, we're, What's up, man? What, uh, stuff and stuff? How What's up doing? with you? Welcome to the party. Thanks. So this is, this is Turbo, not actually Andrew Morris. His real name is Andrew Morris. But I'm going to ask today, from this moment forward, you call him Turbo. And I'm going to give you the backstory. So. I love this uh, Tur so much. Turbo and I were working uh, for a client up in Connecticut. Uh, we were working for separate companies, but working for the same client. And um, he was staying in the same hotel that we stayed at. We basically lived up near this client for a while. And I would take uh, usually a Monday morning train up and go to work and come back on Thursdays. And one week I had an early Monday meeting, so I had trained up Sunday night. And I check into the hotel, and he comes out of his room and he looks like he's been in the worst bar fight in the world. His eye is like swollen and red. And, and Turbo's like fully high energy. He doesn't do coke, but he's like a poster <laughs> child for coke. So he gets like super... I'm actually endorsed by cocaine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like he's got a Columbia tramp stamp. And um, so he, um, he comes out. He's like, hey, what's up, man? As if like nothing's happening. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what's wrong, man? Get the fuck away from me. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, well, I had like an eye infection, I guess. And like, uh, it, they thought they could treat it. And then it was something else. And then the drugs weren't working. And so now I'm on drugs that are supposed to work it. But they told me I can't go anywhere. So I basically have to live in this hotel and eat like room service every day. I'm like, why are you in the hallway? Like, get the hell out of here. So like, he's like, okay. And he bounces back to his room like freaking Tigger. And, um, the next day, like, we're at work, and people are like, hey, where's Andrew? I'm like, oh, he's, uh, he's got, like, Turbo Pink Eye or something. He's stuck <laughs> in his room. And so Turbo Pink so Eye. So everyone started calling me Turbo Tur Pink Eye, and then people just shortened it to Turbo. Turbo. I was like, this is great. Yeah. I love it when people ask me how I got this nickname. Yeah, yeah. It's I really up, and I'm like, oh, it's because I have so much energy. And someone's like, that's not what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it was because he had a super big guy. Super contagious. He actually Thanks. wiped out half of Connecticut. Hartford's gone, Whitney. <laughs> they all died from probably pink for eye. the best. All probably for the best. West Hartford's okay though, so the good pizza's still there. And so yeah. so anyway, I would ask that everyone who attended the ShmooCon and on the internet, please refer to him as Turbo from this, this is point really good. going forward. Really love um, this. I feel like I want to continue this as <laughs> as a thing because you have a long career ahead of you because you're like 14, That's right, I think, like, like yes, yeah. mm -hmm. really young looking. Yep, that's um, true. It, it is true. Four, 14 base what? <laughs> <laughs> 14 base uh, 18. So it's still like it's a legitimate 14. Uh, sort of a math joke. Not quite a math joke there. Um, so what's Eastern Europe like? Um, uh, cheap. cheap. Uh, is it really cheap? Yeah, actually, honestly. So this time, I guess, well, no, maybe like probably what, like in... Something about maybe August or September or October of last year, I burnt out pretty hard, and I was just like, man, like, I'm kind of sick of, like, pretty much everything, so I did what any reasonable person would do, and I just bought a one-way plane ticket to Eastern Europe to just walk around and get drunk As all one does. Did, yeah, you, did I, you have any synthesizers while you were there? No, I didn't. <laughs> Um, and I went and I just kind of like fucked off for like three months and I just got drunk every day for a while and um, like was at a bar <laughs> and I wrote 
the code for the first version of our product that like so many people use right now and that like I, I want to tell all of them like you know how they're like man this is cool but it's like pretty bad and I'm like do you know how dr <laughs> drunk I was when I wrote the, every single line of that code the funniest part it's literally the best code I've ever written in my entire life don't it tell never, your lawyers this it never crashes it's never crashed not one time that sounds like a a dare really like, <laughs> like, like there are things I've learned to say like we've never been hacked oh <laughs> it doesn't crash also really the whole point of this thing was actually to demonstrate uh, a, a good lifestyle <laughs> and then bad lifestyle choices like sleeping four hours a day and going to Eastern Europe and getting hammered and writing code so good Computers, man. yeah there I've there it's our public service announcement the more you know and we're, we're square so so um, you were <laughs> yeah, that's a good when point. When you need one, and you call me, yeah. Yeah, good, good. yeah. Bad lifestyle choices lead you to needing a lawyer. Good lifestyle choices lead you to being a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> There's no other option, right? Like, wow, the world is a dark place these days. <laughs> um, so I, I met Andrew up there, um, and then uh, at some point you started this little journey that has turned into the company that you're you're running. Mm -hmm. um, and I recall at a time you um, were debating whether or not to like, before you went to Eastern Europe, like, yeah. do I throw the whole thing off the boat and just go get wasted and come back and get a J-O-B? And I said, well, you can come work for me. Yep. He's like, okay. Um, and then you called me up. Yeah. And you said, like, I got this thing under control. I'm like, oh, you have customers? And you said, no, I got... Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker <laughs> made enough money on his Bitcoin to, like, go to Eastern Europe and live on the cheap. And to then... be fair, you can make enough money, like, picking up change for like a few days to live in Eastern Europe for like at least a few <laughs> weeks. That's not really that much money, but um, yeah, the dollar goes a long way there. Um, I mean, so basically what happened, like I know I'm so sorry for how much everyone in this room is going to hate me when I tell this story, but basically, I mean, I made a little bit of money with cryptocurrency like every other idiot. And then I like, thought I was like Warren Buffett. <laughs> I was like, I am a God investor. <laughs> I'm right about everything. Like giving investment advice to people. Ooh, tulips. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I am clearly the smartest person to ever live. Um, I mean, I didn't make that much money. The way rumors kind of work is hysterical because I know a lot of people who ask me this all the time and like people who think I'm like still funding my company with this, like this money's been gone for so long. It was He really does do a lot of coke in fairness. <laughs> like, <laughs> it really, really wasn't that much money. It was enough for me to like hang out for like six months um, to a year. Um, yeah, and it was just, I mean, I don't know. It was, it was a crazy ride. Like I just remember like waking up one day and looking at this thing and I was like, ah, that's a shitload of money. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck am I supposed to do with that? It was so. enough to get you at least four or five months. That's a yeah, shitload enough, of money. Enough. I can't wait till you look at retirement as a concept. <laughs> well, it's all, like, yeah. wow, I need a double shitload raised to yeah. a square shitload of money. Yeah. Like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, yeah, it was fine. And so then like literally like I had this money. I went to Eastern Europe for a little bit and like, I mean, you know, I, I just kind of like bummed around and tried to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And then I like built this thing and I like Bruce said, I was really thinking about like throwing it out. I was like, I don't know. And nobody wants this. Like nobody cares about this thing. Um, and then kind of sometime in that like transitionary period where it was like, okay, I have this like little lump sum of money that can last me some period of time. And when it runs out, the like someone either needs to be paying me or like for the product or I just get a job. And it was kind of like a roller coaster of emotions. And then like kind of towards the tail end, I started getting, you know, our first few customers and then it ended up kind of being fine. So he was so well funded. I did a, a video call with him once. Uh, I'm a remote <laughs> worker, so I do a lot of video calls. I did a video call with him once and he actually had um, acoustic paneling in his room to deaden the sound so that his roommate wouldn't hear? It was a mattress. It was a mattress. He literally, <laughs> like, up against the wall. What a mattress. I lived in this shithole apartment. And, because you know, like, when you're starting something and you have to live on, like, a little, like, as little money as humanly possible, you just have to reduce your lifestyle down and you just eat like shit, you live like shit, like, you sell your car, you just, all that stuff. And so, like, I lived in this shithole apartment. And, yeah, I mean, I literally had, like, mattresses. Sounds nice. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was literally a used mattress up against the door. Yeah. I'm like, that's classy, dude. Make sure when yeah. you pitch into investors, you use the mattress. Yeah. That, that really yeah. exudes a, a sense of confidence that most, because like, he is so confident, he put his bed on the wall. Like, <laughs> motherfucker, like, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. It doesn't exactly project success. Hey, do you have something in your eye? <laughs> so, I guess I got to know Eastern Europe or the Carolinas? Um, well, both very cheap. 
Cheap, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm originally from South Carolina, so like, um, I... There are like, a lot of shirtless pictures of him on the internet, by the way. I used to be a shitty pop punk drummer, and I wanted to be Travis Barker so bad. <laughs> um, and so I would like take my shirt off and play the drums. Um, uh, it didn't work. I didn't become Travis Barker. Yeah, um, it sounds like it wasn't pink eye. Maybe it was meth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm getting my coke and my meth confused. That's <laughs> I don't do any drugs. <laughs> this, is, this is getting out you're, of control. Your first stage is awful awful lot. getting over the denial. Internet permanence. It's, if it's set on the internet, it's true. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, it's turbo it's turbo meth. meth. Yeah. Super turbo meth. <laughs> That's turbo meth. Um, yeah, I'm from South Carolina, and like, it has a remarkable amount in common with a lot of the places in Eastern Europe that I was hanging out in. So how'd you learn to code in a state that doesn't have computers? <laughs> yeah, that's like, you're not fucking far off. Um, so, like, um, well, I didn't. I moved, and I learned how to code up here in D.C., where there's more programmers. Um, you can get by for so long like not really being able to code. It's, it's embarrassing how long you can get by and like with jobs and security and stuff like that and like not really I can't code, out. I'm doing okay. Yeah, like, like for so long. I've seen a lot of pen testers that would say the same thing. Yeah, 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 I was one, yeah. And Here, here's your Nessus printout. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's, I don't know, there's like a philosophical discussion to be had about whether or not it does or does not make sense, but the, the honest to God truth is you, you can actually get pretty far. You know what I'm saying? So, so what would you have done differently on this whole fucking journey? Uh, well... <laughs> is, I think he, is this thing alive? <laughs> Can we make him do a haiku? This is not fair. I was about to try to like pick him back up. He's really heavy. I want you to do a Bitcoin cocaine haiku. <laughs> I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> okay, I'm that's not, the first sentence. <laughs> I can't do that. No. That's four. I cannot do oh, that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Shakespeare All right. over here. I, can't, okay. I, I really can't do that. <laughs> that's, not that, that was, oh, <laughs> that's really not. That was the seven. You got that. <laughs> Bruce, I, I, please stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wouldn't do anything differently because that's not how time works. But, um, <laughs> like, honest, I don't know, like, <laughs> this is a big fucking Should moose. I be scared? It's actually a, a, a one to two size. It's not life size. Someone informed me that that's not a life size moose. I'm like, go oh, fuck yourself. It's, it's a baby moose. But baby it's moose don't big, have horns. This is really awkward now. <laughs> <laughs> I need an adult. Yeah, really? Let's have something like, I need Bad at least touch. a good foot of separation here. Before. Show us on the moose. We're... <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> so so I, I guess the same question I, I asked Lost, you, you've done a lot recently. Like, what is, what is your lifestyle like? I mean, like, aside oh from God. eating shitty food, like, do you sleep? No, very little. Um, very, very little. Um, and I don't want my lifestyle. There's like two different distinct things. There's like one, like how do I kind of like live when I'm not in the situation that I'm in right now? And then there's another of like, what am I doing right now out of necessity? And so right now, like, you know, I'm not, I don't have enough like time and, and like hours in the day to do all the things that need to be done and then get like a nice healthy eight hours of sleep. But like, I'm also kind of like, I mean, I think similar to loss, like, like I don't get much sleep even when I don't have that much going on. And it's not like I have any problems like actually falling asleep or anything like that. It's that like I literally just can't make myself like get in bed and go to sleep. I just can't do it. I have too much shit going on. And then when I do, then it's like, okay, then I fall asleep, I wake up, and that's it. Again, may I suggest Colorado? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I think. Like, I hear you. I understand. Apparently, yeah. DC too. D it's oh, legal shit! In DC. Yeah. Weed is legal Conference in canceled. DC. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason it always smells like weed. When you're like walking, that's down Manhattan. <laughs> like here too. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Manhattan smells like weed, and my kids are constantly like, "That's a funny smell that I smell a lot." Like, yes, indeed. <laughs> a funny smell, indeed. It's the dumpsters. I'm sure it's not the weed. <laughs> Jesus. So, I mean, I, I guess it, it's a, it's a weird thing to hear two people up here because Whitney, again, like, congratulations. You sleep, right? Not as well as I God used to. God damn it! <laughs> This was not the positive affirmation. I, I would blame was GDPR for that, though. Yeah. Well, I would wake up in, like, horrible anxiety and stress trying to figure out how to pull data out of a legacy system. Really? Yeah. What? I know. That's why oh. it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I, it's on purpose. I put it there because I didn't want people to see Turbo. And now to get the pink eye. <laughs> God. 
<laughs> what have you done? <laughs> so I, This is going to be recorded forever. Forever. <laughs> Well, it's recorded once and then accessed forever. It's recorded forever. It would use gotcha. up all the available space, and then we wouldn't be able to do anything. And Dear future watchers, please it's hire the, me. It's in, the, <laughs> it's in the blockchain now, too, so you're never getting out oh, of it. Oh, God. Like commit a transaction with this video on the God, chain, that'd be Jesus. great. Jesus. Yeah. How, does anyone know how to delete something from the internet? <laughs> Oh, I love this place. So, from a GDPR perspective, like, what actually keeps you up at night? I thought you were asking me that for a second. Yeah, I was like, no, whoa, 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 You hey, should hey, totally hey, answer yeah, that absolutely. question. You collect data from all over the internet. What is, what yeah, but we up? collect unsolicited data. So, like, if you don't want us to have your data, like, don't skip, data? Don't, like, we, it's passive. If you don't want us to see your shit, don't scan the internet. Shit, man. Does that, does that pass the test? I don't think the regulators would agree with that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> we could get into the architecture. It makes sense. Trust me, I'm a computer's guy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. I'm, so am I. I am I'm, I'm so full of shit right now. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting dangerous. It is. It, it, legit, like, that was wrapped around my foot. I almost took a header. <laughs> so, I mean, GDPR, like, it's real? Yeah, I think it's real. Um, I experienced it. I, can I get a certification that says that I'm GDPR compliant? No, please. So don't it's do real. That. Is what you're telling me, but I can't not be legal certified. advice. I would not. If anyone says we're GDPR compliant, I'd be like, huh, liars. So, so what? Here's what the problem, positive Bruce. affirmation of the GDPR can I say? Um, I think there are really good long-term impacts. One of them is data mapping. That is a weird thing to put on my website. What like is if I want to put the seal of trust for GDPR, I say I'm GDPR aware. I'm cognizant. I'm sentient. I know that like, it's a thing. I, I'm, a, I, I'm topically aware of GDPR. Well, I, so, not your lawyer, not legal advice. I think generally... Um, that, wow, that only took uh, 43 minutes. I hey! know. Um, I think it's things you address in your privacy policy and your user agreement uh, about how you facilitate complying with the GDPR. Access to data, deletion... Whoa! <laughs> Oh, I took the tree out. I thought that was an actual moose. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're fishing, Jesus though, because they've got a line. They can pull it back. Yeah, they can pull it back. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. And this one's just kind of chilling now. Like, it's really, oh, yeah, send the tree home. He's coming back. He's coming oh. Back. oh. Goodbye. So if you want a data mine, Bruce, Goodbye. right now, all you do is set up a company, and the GDPR folks will send you, is anybody here in your list? And then you just take that list, and now you've harvested. <laughs> really? It's happening. Really? Yes, I know companies that yep. have had that happen. They are actually getting information through the GDPR deconfliction process that they didn't already have. Isn't that it awesome? seems antithetical yeah, to the... Well, there are also these companies, and I'll see how it shakes out, where they're saying to users, give us a bunch of information about you, and then we're going to send that information to all these companies and demand that they give access to the data or deletion. And one of the most important things that I think some companies have learned the hard way is if you don't do proper authentication of that user, who the heck are you sending your data to? And so... Um, I think these companies are building up and gaining trust of users that really they shouldn't be doing. So there's, th there's some GDPR scams out there. <laughs> well, you, you're talking to the guy, though, that wanted to take the OPM breach and max it, match it up with the Ashley Madison breach and do a diff. Yeah. Well, the Chinese already did, so, like, why wouldn't you, right? Like, that's my T-shirt. The Chinese already did it. Um, so, I guess, uh, what's, the, what, what's gonna happen in the US? Like, is it gonna be like the California law and all the other states where we just comply with it even though we're not in California, we're not in the EU, so, but we're still gonna do GDPR? So, I think for most of the big companies, uh, they're saying, we're giving GDPR rights to all users just because it's much easier that way yep. and it's more cost effective. So I think we're already seeing a massive impact to US users. Um, you probably can go get your data from companies even if you're not an EU citizen now. Um, oh, now it's got beer. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think California will do effectively the same thing, and that, I think the federal government's fearful of that. Oh, it's, it's already open. Like, I was going to drink oh, it, gross. but I think it's somebody else's actually empty beer bottle, so I'm not going to do unless somebody else wants to try it. No, you sure? I hear you can get pink eye from that. I can so. get pink eye? Oh, yeah. come here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am being serious. Th yeah, because this whole thing's been serious. So why the fuck would I suddenly not be serious now? Jump on. It's an empty. What? 
Joe Bond. I'm going to break this thing. No, because that shit you said to Whitney, you're sitting on this thing now. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. There's no, no, no. chair. There's Thank no chair. You. It was a yep. bad joke. No, it was a shitty joke. Come it was on. a really bad Come joke. On. Nope, nope, nope. I'll be here. What? <laughs> I can't sit on the moose. You can't sit on the moose. I, I can't sit you. on the moose. I'm going to hold the moose. Whoops. Oh. It's, it's really stable. Totally safe. This is going to fall on me, and it's going to hurt more than the I comment. I can sit on the moose. Sit on the, it's, trust me, I, I can sit on the moose. Can it's, I sit on it like a... It's rated well, not, for no like No side saddle. Put your leg on saddle? that and this feel is, the two by four. It's literally rated for 250 pounds, and you weigh like yeah. 86. Just like the duct <laughs> tape dolly is this also is, rated for that. This is horrible. All right, come on. Let's this do it. This is the worst thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. All right. <laughs> oh, God, it's so far. Here, up my... Hold your scepter. All right. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. I want you to, hey, I want you to apologize. Goodbye, everyone. I want you to apologize to Whitney. I'm sorry, Whitney. America. This is going to fall over. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I think I with that, myself. we're going to draw this to a conclusion. What? You asked for a uh, Bitcoin cocaine. Uh, a Bitcoin cocaine haiku was requested. Oh my God! You should introduce yourself, sir. Oh, hi. I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <coughs> uh, a Bitcoin cocaine haiku. Yes. Bitcoin is better than cocaine for bad choices. Still beats EA games. Oh! <laughs> Dang! It's not even March 15th. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I still will protect your data. Yay! All right, well, with that, we're going to wrap this up. <clears throat> we're going to get on to closing, uh, so stick around for closing. Thank you very much for the inaugural. You guys want to do this again next year? That was actually not that much of a rousing success, so maybe we will <laughs> skip it next time. <laughs> oh, oh, we have to give you your moose heads. So we used to do, like, closing plenaries and keynotes and stuff, and we don't do that, so now we do these shenanigans, and we have our, our gift is always moose heads. Um, and, oh. Nothing. I'm just going to go make Bruce apologize to these three people on stage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Don't hug Turbo, you get pink. Yet. I, I was going to say, does anyone have some eyewash? Uh, all right. We'll be right back with closing ceremonies. <laughs>